Welcome to Blind Shovel, an arts and music podcast. Today I speak with ceramicist Trevor Baird. Enjoy. How you been? I'm chilling. All right. What's up with yeah, you? Yeah, you. All oh, sorts of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's good. It's been a while. Yeah. Are you still in Toronto? Uh, I'm in Montreal. Oh yeah, Montreal. you were always in Montreal. Yeah, but I think I'm gonna leave soon. To Toronto? You're going straight to Toronto? No, hell no. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. I would have to get like a. I would need a stipend to live in Toronto. I think. It's. I was there recently. It sucks, in my opinion. Just architecturally, yeah. it's kind of a weird, super weird place. I mean, all of Canada is kind of like that. Yeah. But it's mostly just like it's so expensive. Really. Yeah, I kind of did the opposite of you, where you're like, I'm gonna do community shit till I'm like 40. I'm uh-huh. like, I'm doing all the art stuff now, but not making yeah. enough money to live anymore. So I'm like, yeah. fucked. <laughs> well, uh, so what's, what is that situation? I can see the ceramics have gotten like, in more. they're more grotesque in a sense. Is yeah. That, well, is that fair? They're like dirtier. Yeah. I wanted to make them more like earthy, but also like, yeah, a little bit more raw, I guess. They're more singular in a sense, like they're a singular scene. Well, there was like, because I was making that old work, like the porcelain stuff. Yeah. And uh, I had this big project that I had to do like right when COVID hit. Yeah. Like I had signed on to it in December. And then it was supposed to be due in June. And that was like in 2020. So like COVID hit and whatever. And I was like, this is sick. I can whatever just like i can still go to my studio like i'm locked down but i can still do this stuff Mm -hmm. but then i was just doing it like 50 hours a week and so much stuff was changing around me like obviously but uh the work is was so like um what's the word like really structured and how you make it Mm -hmm. so once you begin like a certain aspect of it which usually happens like months and months before you can't really change it that much. And it yeah. just, re- it felt like really, uh, I don't know. It had like no bearing on my life anymore, really. It started to feel like I was, I don't know, working for someone else or something. Hmm. So You're I, talking like, about like the white vase ones, right? Yeah. Because if I understand it, it correctly, like, if I understand correctly, they're kind of like a template, those vases. Yeah. They were made with molds and like silk screen and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. So, like, so much of that stuff was, like, extremely difficult to do and change when everything was locked down. So, like, I couldn't really be going out and changing my mind and, like, switching stuff up. Trying to Hmm. make things, like, more relatable to how I was feeling at the time. So So, so you felt restricted by that process? Yeah. And I really, like, was trying to figure out a way to do something that was a bit more liberated in terms of, like being in the studio like all you need is clay you don't need all this extra shit that i built up into this practice yeah i wonder if maybe because uh you had to art had to be everything in that covid moment i wonder if that became more um suffocating because i think if your life is is a, a bit chaotic and varied it's a little more easy to have a process that's pretty structured yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Because you come to it for almost like relief. But I yeah. can see where if you can't leave or do anything, then you're going to try to bring the whole world into that process. Yeah. It, yeah. And it also just felt, yeah, it was super repetitive. And like nothing was really like an expression anymore, like an immediate expression. Yeah. I guess it, like that, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing got more... Um, like romantic to me or something 
expression. Yeah, like actual, like sh- having like actual expression of something, or like vulnerability or whatever. I feel like I was hiding behind a technique. Hmm. I don't know. Something needed to kind of change. And so that's currently occurring, would you say? Uh, no, I'm kind of like past it. I don't really, I've kind of, I mean, it was really hard to make the switch and I don't think the work immediately was like up to my standards. Mm -hmm. So I kind of haven't showed stuff in like almost a year and I've just been working on that. And I think it's getting to a point now. Um, what was the uh, response from the hypothetical collectors of the work? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, you could not. I have no idea, actually. You have no I'm, clue. Let me put it no, this way. Like, really. like, was, I don't recall. Like, do you live off of the work or do you have to go to work? Or what's the situation? I have to go to work now, for sure. I mean, what, what's the job? Wait, stepping back for a second. Sure, 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 sure. Step all I was the way saying back. that I'm going to move and I used to love Montreal because it was really affordable. Like it was yeah, yeah. kind of weird, yeah. weird spot that was affordable, which like facilitated people being in the arts and like whatever. You could have the time to follow up on whatever thing it was that you actually wanted to do. Sure. And uh, I mean, yeah, like being in the studio 40 hours a week, like kind of made me lose my mind a bit. So I took a job to like just have a break from it to not be thinking about it like seven days a week. But then me and my girlfriend were thinking of moving in Montreal and over COVID the cost of apartments has like doubled. So we can't really move anywhere, but then Hmm. jobs have obviously stayed the same. I don't know. It's just really expensive and I, I, I don't know. So what's the job? I work at this concrete place, but like That's housing, cool. uh, like design, art, art products or whatever they're called. Really? Yeah, they're really nice. They're like these really colorful. Uh, um, I don't know, design objects, art objects, or whatever they're called. And that's you go to work in Montreal, and you get to do this concrete art. Yeah, working with like molds and stuff. It's kind of more of the same of what I was doing in my yeah, yeah. previous work. Which is kind of nice funny. that it's a bit different now. I'll need to check that out. What's that called? It's called Concrete Cat. They that made like, like uh, yeah, yeah. they made a. Uh, do you know Seth Rogen's weed company? <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, I know who he is, and I'm sure that that exists. But oh wait, I think I did come across an advertisement, and it was embarrassing. And uh, <laughs> but I, th- I find him generally embarrassing as as an adult. I know, um, me too. But what'd they make? Uh, like a fucking... They made like this Weed tray. tray? Yeah. Yeah, I think I may have... This is, this is rad. I mean, they're nice. I like the, the weed rolling trays. It's not my favorite brand in the world, but the rolling trays are nice. Wow, I'm so confused by what this is, but... Uh, <laughs> the company? Uh, yeah. Or no, just like well, the, the concrete cat. I gotta look into it more. There's like art objects, MF Doom masks... I don't know. I don't get it, but uh, <laughs> that's cool that you can work there. Yeah, I mean it's sick. It's a really that's small awesome. company. I feel like that's why it probably doesn't make much sense because it's just like the owners kind of doing whatever they want. I mean, they get a lot of projects too that aren't exactly like as their company, or like it is, but they're not really advertising it. Like they do a lot of like yeah. architectural work and stuff like that. That's kind of the spot I'm in with my. Uh, in my partner's fabrication company. Yeah. So I'm like actually just very interested in what's going on here. But I don't want to get too in the weeds with that. So uh, <laughs> Mo- Montreal's very expensive. Would you leave Canada? Uh, No. I you're mean... Born, you're from Canada, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm from BC. Like outside Vancouver. I'll probably move back to the West Coast. Yeah, I've never been uh, to the West Coast. It's kind of nice. It's It's super expensive but one of the reasons i didn't want to move back there was because it was so expensive but now montreal is on par and all my family's there it's closer for my girlfriend's family my brother has like a kid who i've seen like once yeah it's so fucked up there's a bunch of shit like that that's kind of weighing on me i guess 
Um, not, uh, what, what, can you explain briefly the economic nature of this doubling prices in Montreal? I mean, it's a cool city for sure, but I just don't get why that happened during COVID. If people moved in from, uh, you know, we kind of had people leave cities, it seemed like the opposite happened. No, I think it's most, I think it's just in Canada, um, real estate really just became like an investment thing. I think that's happening all over the place. Yeah. But it started on the West Coast a lot more in Toronto. And Montreal, for some weird reason, was this holdout. I think just like the structure of their, I don't know, laws and language laws and stuff. I think they just like made it really annoying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess everyone just bought houses and stuff or whoever was making money from real estate could buy more houses or people were priced out of, I don't know, Toronto or New York or whatever. And they moved to Montreal. I don't know That's exactly exactly what it is but yeah i don't know it's just kind of skyrocketed or but i don't know maybe like the landlords are just like yeah fuck it we can get this much money now right but yeah but so the, the freakiness is decreasing of the city yeah it's gotten really bougie like everyone i know who used to be in like punk bands is now a natural wine person sick which yeah yo COVID not reduced me. reduced freakiness dramatically um, all the under, like all the bands in New Jersey, I don't even know where they are anymore. It's just like yeah. they disappeared. It's fucking. Yeah, I always, I always wonder how much of that is me, like checking out, and how much sure. of it is just fair. No one's yeah. doing it anymore. Yeah, I mean, we're old by any I mean, met- yeah. metric metric True. of like uh, coolness. So, <laughs> right? I think you're probably my age, or no, you're younger than me. I think not by much. No, I'm like 33. So yeah, basically the same age. Okay, okay. Yeah. So the the comics um, aspect is is kind of less present, or is that just me looking at specific works? No, it's definitely less present. I think it's um, I've approached it more like instead of putting comics on something, having the works be drawings, like the drawings, more similar exactly. to the drawings yeah. themselves. That's what I'm getting the vibe of. Like it's almost like a panel from the previous work is now a scene, sculpted. Mm-hmm. I haven't really thought about it in the context of comics too much, but yeah, like it is a ex- like a, a extension of like a drawing style or whatever. And okay. I feel like I recall you saying you used to you briefly made comics right but then it found its way onto ceramics yeah i was doing it just with friends when we all like didn't really have any money because it's a very accessible thing yeah but we weren't i don't know we weren't actually spending i maybe spent a lot of time on it for like two winters and then i was like i'm gonna go to school and whatever and took ceramics classes and then transferred that whatever that practice on the ceramics and now i just kind of like ceramics itself more that's oh, like you, the, you like you digested the urge to make comics and now you've been shat out on the other side yeah but i think it's because yeah. it's i mean i like the materiality i think i have a really hard time sitting with something like that like I'm, i've never really been that good with 2d stuff like, I don't think I have much of a grasp for it, if you understand what I mean. Like, you ever do something where you're just like, oh, this makes sense to me, and I know how to push it, and I know how to make it do this and make it do that? I never yeah, really yeah, felt that yeah. way with comics. Like, I would just yeah, do yeah. it because I kind of could. Yeah, I know what you mean. I usually anthropomorphize things like that, so there's definitely mediums and processes that you like just get along with like you would a person naturally and then there's other ones that are a constant struggle but it isn't clear to me that that struggle is bad as i look back on the last uh, 15 years of my life and i don't know i think there's pros and cons to what i would call like a, a relationship full of tension in respect to like the like comics wasn't 
fun to me for me right but it, it's sustainability over time then becomes a problem like yeah. I, I think naturally i was like i don't i don't this isn't making me like it isn't serving my whole entity right and so it's pretty hard to keep doing a thing for longer than a decade that isn't in line with all the other peripheral stuff in your life yeah you didn't think that like the narrative aspect of it was like you could relate to that and like change no, it to how you wanted to of comics yeah no there's there's so much i like about the process but i'm more so talking about how it affects my actual life and uh right yeah yeah, yeah. this is just an unavoidable reality of the medium and process you choose yeah. so like you said it's an incredibly uh, low bar into entry which was great yeah but then the isolation component became yeah that part's rough yeah i just don't think you like i i really could not find a way to mature as a human while continuing to make comics for some reason and that's on me but right i, I know i just couldn't I do it i only ever did it in the winter when oh, really? there was nothing else to do or at least that's when i would do the bulk of the the work um mm. and i also lived with like four people or yeah. maybe more so it was really easy to like socialize in between all this stuff i didn't yeah. really feel like i was missing out on anything i really honestly don't think i could do it now like that amount of time commitment and stuff like that yeah yeah it's um if you haven't found a foothold and like had some financial success i think that allows you to commit that time it by 30 yeah. something it's pretty hard um, yeah that's why i'm saying like maybe when i'm like 50 i would go back but also i'm pretty okay with not being a specific thing my entire life obviously yeah. um for better or for worse it's just not you know i know there's like eight billion people so specializing is kind of a necessity but <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't really come naturally to me i mean fair enough yeah. Variety is the spice of life, man. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah, right? But then, like, spice isn't enough to live off of. So, <laughs> you can't just live a life of variety, you know what I'm saying? You can't live off yeah, of spice. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Spice. <laughs> yeah, you, you, need, you need meat, yeah. potatoes. Yeah, that's true. Like, it's yeah, kind of I mean, cool. It's cool to have a job. I'm sure you're enjoying the concrete cat. I mean, back and forth. I think the thing that's really annoying is that basically with the art stuff, like I just have two jobs. So it can be extremely overwhelming at times and trying to balance the two is like really stressful. But still it's not like good enough money to... I don't, it, feel, it feels like I'm working and then on the side running a failing business that like, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. expects a very large amount of my time yeah that's fair yeah that's an interesting way to put it are you still represented yeah 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 by Pangy. Nice. that's a cool gallery yeah i like it I like i'm glad they the still exist yeah me too it's just uh yeah um but i feel good about the new work that's nice and I feel like I also have convinced myself recently that, like, I think part of it was, like, with deadlines and shows and all this stuff, like, you really have to spend money to make the things be the way you want them to be or, like, be mm -hmm. happy with it. Especially for, like, uh, sculptural stuff. Like, you're like, okay, for this to work, I'm going to have to invest in this hardware. I'm going to have to make these structures. I'm going to have to do this and do that which isn't really the work like that's not the part of the work that i'm like really excited to make yeah so then you have to do that with the money you earn from your job and then build all that stuff and the time where you really want to be like fucking around with clay or whatever yeah so i've kind of convinced myself that i'm like realistically if i just go and work full time for a while like i'll want to make stuff with clay no matter what but then I won't have like the deadline things. And I think that's like the actual like business of art part is what I really have a hard time dealing with, I guess. You need an intern. 
dude, I need more money is what I, <laughs> what I need. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I've been thinking about that. Do you think that uh, when you feel good about your own work, the world feels good about it? Or do you think there's an inverse property? In other words, when you feel good about it, people don't like it. And then when you get bored of it and it's hitting its kind of stride of kind of, like like almost like being branded, people really like it. Or do you think or do you think you're in, al aligned with the masses in respect to how they see the work? That's a good question. I don't know either what comes first. Because I could yeah, like really right, right. like the work in the studio. And then also like, you know, there's all these different parts of a work. And someone could be like, you could hear it a thousand times of people being like, I really love this part. And you're like, I fucking, this is the worst part to me. <laughs> and you're like, I don't feel yeah, yeah. aligned. And then it makes you like dislike it or something. I don't know. It's like a chicken or the egg thing for me. I don't know what happens. I I don't know. And I think it has to be from someone that I like trust. Because sure. I think there's a lot of people with taste that I don't agree with, which is totally fine. But I do get kind of uneasy sometimes. So they're like, oh, I love this. It's kind of like that thing. Like, Fuck. Is that what it what it is? Like <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah, they like it because it like, reminds them of a thing they already like. Yeah, and it could be a thing that I despise and i'll be like fuck is that what my work is like am i not seeing this thing like seeing it in a new light or something yeah I, I think in my more cynical moments i think it's an inverse property I, I suspect that viewers or consumers really like feeling the pain of the person who made something and by pain i mean the sacrifice or the suffering or or the like that car alarm threw me off, but uh, I think viewers want to see struggle, want to see some kind of discomfort. Like I, I always think of like hippies on a sidewalk making art and how much they love their art and how bad it is and how smooth it all feels. Like they're just like, there's just no antagonism towards their own process. It's just yeah. this like free flowing, detritus and then i think of the opposite like it seems like the struggle can be the key sometimes to making it worth looking at like i think a lot of contemporary art and modern art is just so boring to me because it doesn't feel like anything was invested in the work whereas i look at older paintings etc and i'm like wow that that feels like decades of suffering learning like you, you think it's execution. like checked out like, you don't um, like looking at work that you think the person's just checked out and, like, formulaic. Oh, 100%. Yeah. You know, like, um, I think objects in general, I want to feel human. I don't know if suffering is the right word. Investment. Like a, like a handmade table or something. Right. There's just something imbued in it. And... Um, no, definitely don't want to see checked out shit, but I also just don't want to see easy shit. Yeah. I, f I feel like uh, it's suspicious to me. Yeah. I don't know. I think the thing that I've felt is missing in work that I've seen is that they're not really going for something. Like, I would rather see someone try something really fucked up and fail or, like, not quite make it than see something that they're like, yeah, this works. Let me just make 30 of these. You mean that tangibly? Like, would you be able to say what you're going for when talking about your own work? I mean, I guess so. It was mostly, like, uh, material-wise, I guess. So I'm what still, are you like, for? Oh, fuck. Dude, I don't know. I just got off work. I can't be thinking about this <laughs> stuff right now. I was like, yeah, I can talk for a while, but if you, like, ask me any of these things... I'm going to absolutely flounder. But I also think it speaks to, I don't think what you're saying is like literally someone could tell you what they're going for. Yeah, right. You're like it's, a, it's more of an intuitive thing. Like you feel the stakes, the, the risk of pursuing the thing. Yeah. Which has often misled me to liking bad work, I think. I just like, I, sometimes I'm too into the, the, the sheer audacity of a work as opposed to like its its general quality. I don't know if that makes sense. 
It's like a punk rock thing. Well, like, oh, this is cool because it's doing something perverse, but it, maybe it's not even doing it well, you know? Right. Well, I mean, I guess I'm... I think I have that same kind of mindset, which maybe does draw in some bad work, but or you miss out on good work because of it. I don't really know, but there is, I don't, I don't really believe in like good or bad work objectively. Hmm. I mean, maybe like maybe first year art students, like, a, <laughs> well, yeah, there's a lot, I just feel like with all things, I know what evil or bad is in art, hmm. but I couldn't, I couldn't tell you exactly what the opposite was, but I can like flail in the dark for it you know what i mean i mean there's a lot of art that i was like fuck i hate this so much and then it made me think about what i hate about it and whatever and it kind of clarified certain things for me or like at least i could figure out a way that it was interesting in some way sure sure so like even then if i'm like it's bad and i don't like it it still did something so it's not all sure. bad you know sure 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 but that's like me saying I learned a lesson from someone because they're an idiot and they did something stupid versus I learned a lesson from someone because they, like, they articulated a good, you know, wise sentiment to me. Right. Well, it's almost like you're objectifying the, the idiot, idiocy of the other person just to be like, oh, I get it. This is the wrong thing. So I don't think they're on the same level, if that makes sense. Yeah. Fair enough. It's, it, it's like using, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah. But they're also like within like a structure or something like the work that I'm thinking about being shown at like a big gallery mm -hmm. and be like, okay, like this is, how did this get here? Like, what do they think that this means? That's a fun question. What how did this get here? <laughs> yeah. Or like, you know, what are the people that are like investing in this work? Like, what are they getting out of it? But what do they think they're getting out of it? Do you know who buys your work? Do you have a sense of who buys your work? Uh, no, not really. Do you ever hang out with a person who bought your work, like a collector? I don't think so. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, no, not really. It's I mostly very hang out with like other artists. I don't really hang out with like collectors that much. That's where you're going wrong. I know. You got to start hanging out with collectors, dude. Dude, I dress too <laughs> shitty for that. I think they yeah, can yeah. smell they it can, on me. Yeah, they sniff you out. Yeah, I did try to go to this. Um, I got invited to this like VIP museum dinner sure. thing at someone's house. Yeah. And I was like, they're like, yeah, just one ticket. So I was like, all right, yeah, I'll go. We'll go after work. Like came home, showered, got dressed up, went down there. And uh, there was no other artist in attendance. And I was so uncomfortable that I just like chugged a glass of wine and bounced. And it was Damn. like, you could, you would have to pay me to go to an art thing after that. <laughs> it was do such you, a do you, wild do you go to, feeling. Do you go to openings still? Not, still happen? not that much. I think what I was saying where I'm like so busy with work and having a studio practice that like, and also, they're right next to each other, like my work and my studio. Oh, yeah. So for me to leave this area, like, mostly I'd be going home. I mean, I try to. I try to go to a few every once in a while. But uh, is, is Are you excited by that? Not really. I feel like I like going to openings and seeing people, but I don't really have a lot of close friends that do that. So usually I'll just be going alone. Right. I'll run into all these people that I know or whatever, but like I also never really see the work. I mean, it's a classic opening thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about the work. Yeah. I don't know. I like I like a lot of people in the like arts community in Montreal. But uh So, it's like pretty decent in uh, Montreal art-wise. I think so. It's a lot of it's a lot of younger people, which is cool. But um can be difficult if you're trying to be like what what's the next step like what's some advice sure. from like a i don't know if there's a whole lot of mentors in the city i guess yeah yeah where are you going with it either financially or even just the work itself i can see that being difficult yeah or someone to just come over and give you some like straight talk be like what yeah. the fuck is going on with this 
<laughs> I did talk to one artist and she was like, you have to find one person that can be completely honest with you, but also that you trust enough to realize that they have your best interests at heart. And she was like, that's just my husband, which can be kind of gnarly, but nice. it also just absolutely helps with my work. But she also said that she doesn't show anything for a year after she's made it hmm. and just sits with it. That's smart. Which is smart, but I'll, I'll probably never do that. Do you have this, this perfect person? No. I think it's, no. that's like a difficult thing. You got to get that person. I know. I got to figure out who it is. I mean, what's interesting, like when I think about collectors of your work, what's hard about what you do in some ways, especially the vases, is they mix a really weird, um, like if you were sitting down with a, a target marketing, whatever, like some bureaucrats or corporate individuals, and they were looking yeah. at the vases with the comics on them, and they're kind of like smashed and collage -y, Yeah, I feel like they couldn't identify a target audience, which for me makes it very interesting and beautiful. Um, I feel like I started to, to see it. Or not you like a target it? target audience for like people who are buying it. Yeah. But like just being on Instagram, you could see a lot of the people, like the demographic that would view the work or whatever. And it was a lot of like, uh, it started to feel like I was just making like high end objects, like just home, home objects. Hmm. And I feel like that was the part mixed in with this thing where I was like I don't know if I'm really expressing myself or I'm just like designing and making objects which is not really what I wanted to do yeah you're saying like you you're negatively looking at things as decorative yeah and I, I don't think there's anything like wrong with decorative stuff um, like if that's if that's what you want to do but being sure. accidentally viewed as decorative and being lumped in with like uh, production companies is uh, one, it's like a massive headache, but two, I just didn't really want to do that. I don't really know why. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, um, I'm sure it's hard to articulate because you probably still like making the work. Well, it sounds like no. It sounds like you were falling into something that felt too predictable. Well, you know what's weird is that I started like I stopped making that work and I started making the like kind of drawing more sculptural. Like they're a thing. Like they're a standalone. They're not functional. They're like I don't know an image or like a structure, or whatever, or a scene or something like that doing that then i could i have been making just like straight up functional stuff where i'm mm. like this is just functional like i could separate them for myself in a way whereas like i think they were too tied together and it kind of like scared me i guess i guess just in the rules of like selling art there are like our rules you have to follow with like pricing and all the shit like this which isn't really my expertise but like it started to get weird and like scary to me to like make a misstep and i don't know sure i could imagine implode the two or something but now that i can see how separate they are i think honestly they're like probably even closer than before but for a viewer i can be like no this is a cup and that's like a sculpture Whereas the other mm -hmm. ones are just like, oh, it's vases with cool stuff on it. And like, right. I would be like, this is like a, a canvas or something. Like, it's about the surface and it holds all these things while being a structure at the same time. Like, you know, I don't know, whatever, some shit like that. But, like, people would be like, oh, that's a cool object. Like, mm -hmm. I want to put my umbrellas in it or something. Oh, for sure. And I think there is something interesting about functional work and, like, making it and how you make it and whatever but i don't know the two things just kind of started getting a bit crossed well yeah no i see what you mean because you have these lamp um like they're objects they're cool i like them mm. the, uh it's like two years ago making yeah. these foot lamps and nose lamps yeah so they are obviously objects yeah clearly yeah and even the way you made these um 
like these stands. I don't even know what that's made of. Concrete. Very interesting. The just, like the silhouette parts. I don't know. I'm just scrolling through the old gram here. This is from like uh, four years ago. So you've really been at this. This uh, actually now that I'm like stepping back. Like you've been doing the comic vase process for what's it like five years, six years. Yeah, I think I I think I figured it out in school in like probably 2017 or something. Oh wow! So I didn't realize. Yeah, you you've been giving it a go at that for quite some time. Oh, late 2016. I feel like I cracked it in late 2016. It also like yeah, it's a very difficult the the pro like the reason that you have to use a mold like you don't explicitly have to. But the failure rate is so extremely high if you don't. And so much time and effort is going into, like, the painting and silk screening of them. All before, like, the piece is made. It's, like, very weird. The, the process of it is, like, kind of backwards. You put a bunch of time into it before you actually even start yeah, using yeah, clay. Yeah. But anyways, try like, I just... It was super difficult, whatever, and I couldn't, at the end of the day, like, figure out a new direction to take it with all those pieces that would be, like, interesting and different enough for me. Like, it had kind of run its course as, like, a practice. And recently... Yeah, 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 I get you. I feel you. But, like, I've kind of started to bring it back, but in a different way. Like, using a different type of clay that's more... I don't know. You can work with it on like a individual, like you can make an individual piece, a one-off piece with it. You can build mm -hmm. the original and that will be it. Instead of like making a mold, making this, like whatever. All these things that have to be made like way in advance. Right. Um, well, you had so mentioned yeah. something earlier that I always find interesting. Is like, again, might be hard to answer after work, but you were talking about expressing yourself and how you feel the new work allows you to do that but I think when people typically hear expressing oneself they assume it's about expressing emotions and they're, they want to see a canvas that's like a big slash of black ink because you're mad or something uh, the American style American <laughs> yeah <painting. you> know. <laughs> but like it, I don't think it would be clear to non-artists how uh, the vases were not expression or they were a lower level of expression and then the newer work is more expressive for you or there's some outlet that you're getting from them that wasn't occurring before do you know what I mean mm -hmm. like what does it mean to express is it more just like you can play more like you as an individual in the process are allowed to play yeah you're like much you're much more present like I think one of the things that was stressing me out was that a lot of people would be really interested in these aspects of the old work that wasn't actually the like elements of difference, like being able to like, you know, put things in, in certain ways or like, you know, move things around like that active part of the work mm. of making the work. I'd be like, this shape is so cool. I'm just like, yeah, it's just a mold of a shape. Like it's not, <laughs> It's not yeah, really yeah, like an yeah. active, a big active process in the making of it. I mean, it's important, but it's like it's done so far in advance that it's like set in stone. Well, yeah, hmm. I think like uh, choices and stuff, there's way more choices to be made in the new work. And like they can be made throughout the entire process instead of just this like one hour window in the old porcelain process. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. That there's, um, well, yeah, because effectively you're like making the drawings and then it's going on a mold. And yeah, I'm sure that like the percentage of time that I would call like the spark or the execution, just in, in respect to like the drawing, is probably very low compared to the screen printing and the. I don't even. Under, I still don't really understand how the how it works, but the application to the vase uh, mold. Yeah. I mean, it's a transfer. So, like, you're making a flat image on plaster. And, like, that's an active part. You're designing this, like, 
2D thing that's flat, and then you're transferring it into a 3D object, and you're choosing all these things at that process. Yeah. But, like, the drawings themselves were done, like, way in advance and then selected at a different time. So, like, all these things kind of, like, for me ended up getting lost. Like, they were selected and done with such a gap in between that, like, they kind of lost this thing. And yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. I would get a lot of answers about it, and I'm like, I, like, don't even remember. Like, I probably drew that, like, a year ago. And it was just some, like spur of the moment thing it reminds me of my inability to write a script for a comic and then execute the script i don't know why if i do that i just can't finish it because it feels like i already know what's it's like work it's like here's the the thing right. i'm trying to and i think it's like for me like you mean moment. like the the jokes aren't funny anymore because you're just <laughs> dead eyed <laughs> like writing some shit down it means that the way I typically make a comic is page by page, and it's like this process of... Um, oh, it's like active. Yeah, yeah. Like the, yeah. There's like a revelatory aspect where... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I call it like the... I didn't, I didn't invent this by any means, but like there's like a beingness to the, to the process. So yeah. as a, it's exactly what we're talking about. There's, yeah. there's, a life, there's a life on the other side that's palpable and real and talks back to you all the time, as yeah. opposed to... All right, I got to clock in and dig a hole for ten hours mm. and clock out. Yeah. And I wonder if I'm just yeah, I like too much novel. I often question the amount of novelty I have to seek in my life. So I don't know if it's an extension of that, and it's a form of immaturity. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a weird problem to have because I really do think people tend to like the work. Uh, the more you're consistent, and the more there is almost a formula. Mm. It's like people can latch onto it because then they can say, "Oh, this is what Trevor is," and there's right. like comfort in knowing who Trevor is. Yeah, and there's a discomfort in um, him switching it up. Yeah, I mean it's uncomfortable for me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> in a good way, probably I would say. Uh, in the studio, yes. Like I love that part, but then like showing it, like I'll just have a single piece at some. I don't know, like a fair where there's a bunch of work. Yeah. They'll be like, what are you doing here? They'll be like, oh, I have a piece. And they're like, oh, I didn't see it. And I'm like, you for sure did. You just didn't know <laughs> that I'd made it. Um, That's cool. Yeah. I mean, you got, I mean, you got, got a probably, long life ahead of you. you yeah, I should probably life. lean into it and be like, That's cool. You know, like when they put out the textbook of your work, that was only six years of doing vases. You know yeah, that's I mean? kind of depressing, though. Yeah, yeah. What's depressed? Doing six years of vases. <laughs> I'm sure you did other things in, in that span, but what I mean is often we look at like art books and we're like, like, it might be like 15 years of some person making five paintings that look consistent. Right, yeah. So I think there's like this different scale of time where we think we got to like constantly be switching it up. Mm. Um, but I respect the devotion to the vases. I mean, yeah. It it was good, and I feel like I naturally, it naturally kind of ran its course, like that I still have interest in, but I couldn't find a way to push it further. Yeah. Um, like it might be different if I was just there flying off the shelves, and I was like making money hand over fist, and I could just hire someone and be like, I don't fucking whatever. I'll find yeah, a yeah, new way yeah. to like yeah. breach breach it or something. But at the moment, I was just like. I, I'm not interested in, in doing this right now. But so that's been like about three years, right? Where you've switched it up because COVID was about, about three two. years. About two. Yeah. I mean, I, I had to I had to wean off because I still had like... You were addicted. Thing, well, like there was things that I still had to do that I was like signed up for or whatever. Oh, true. You have obligations. Yeah. 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 Um, fuck was I going to say no I'm just saying like you're, you're so you're kind of like two years into this newer yeah process yeah but it's going good it's also like I really just love all the different types of ceramics like this is a huge world out there of like shit to try like it's been around forever there's you can just put you can do it all types of ways 
so it's been really nice to be able to like actually pursue a different direction that like maybe wouldn't make sense with the porcelain work mm. like being like i want to try a different type of firing i want to like it opens up all these the different like avenues in ceramics itself that you can try out try it once see if it works instead of being like uh like why am i doing this like i don't know you can i can cater to ceramics more a little bit yeah i don't know enough technically i mean i've dabbled but i think i understand what you're saying but to just be like yeah i'm gonna go do like a wood firing and be like yeah. okay the temperature is different the glazes are different whereas with the ceramic work i'm like i make the clay i don't really have a recipe to change it to a higher thing I'd have to make the higher temperature clay. Whereas now I can be like, okay, I'm just going to buy this other, like a box of this other clay. Try some shit that I already have. I have materials, like whatever. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely feel that in the work. There's this, uh, it is interesting how earthy it's gotten. I mean, comics are, I wouldn't consider comics earthy often. Yeah. You know, there's more saturation of color etc yeah but these these things are they're almost nightmarish but in like a nightmare realm you know what i mean like darkened i mean yeah one is with the clay because i ended up using this like really iron rich clay um i made all this work for a show like my dipping my my toe for the first time i used this like really cheap light clay so it made the mm -hmm. colors like pop a lot more and then uh, whatever, there was like inconsistencies in just using it and building with it that I didn't like. So I switched to this other one that I like materially, like working with it and like when it's wet and whatever. But then when it came to glazing, like none of the same glazes worked and they got really dark. So I've been mm -hmm. like, it's been basically a year of like trying to figure out how to get that to work. But there is definitely a push towards like natural stuff. Like I'm also using like more natural ingredients and stuff like that, like wood ash and whatever. That's cool. And trying to really like simplify it and like have things that I can actually just get from like people around. Like I can just go to the restaurant and get wood ash or like, hmm. I don't need to be as uh, beholden to like all these like industrial companies and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 It's kind of liberating actually. And I oh, think that it? was like the, the pushback that I had with the other work is being like, I, this is so claustrophobic. Yeah, yeah. No, that's an interesting thing you're mentioning, just like the industrial versus the, well, I guess you can call it natural, but it does feel like you dig these up in the woods somewhere, especially this, obviously this strange mushroom. Well, it's not so strange, but you know, yeah. the mushroom. One. <clears throat> yeah. And then you can also like, because you're glazing it too, you can sort of push like natural pouring and whatever, like very quick movements and stuff like that. Instead of being like very meticulous and being like, this is screen printed and it's tight and it's not moving and it's perfect and it's bright. I can be like, well, I'm yeah, just going to yeah. pour this thick shit on it and let a bunch of like wood ash fall on it in the kiln and stuff like that. Right. I mean, ceramics is wild in terms of what you might say. Uh, I mean, I guess like the level of control you ultimately have. I, I think that's the part that turns me off about it. It's just like not knowing what a glaze will look like till it's fired, the fail rate, the variability of all these things. But I could also see how that's incredibly uh, entertaining and sustainable over a long period of time because there is like a it's a very real relationship you must have with the material in the kiln yeah and you're also like being surprised right like you actually care about the results i mean you, you probably always care about the results but like you're seeing it in real time developing for like another type of work whereas this it's like I don't know, opening Christmas presents or something. Like, there's still elements of surprise and, like, things that are uncontrollable and whatever, which is liberating. But then once you bring in deadlines and 
sure. like the more art yeah, world yeah. business stuff that's when you want to like blow your brains out right i can imagine that mix not being very uh holy yeah but yeah i don't know it's fun i mean this last one i really like this lion's web yeah that was the first one with the silk screen on it yeah that's why i, I like that that yeah. back side just and that I combination think, that synthesis mm -hmm. and i think the glaze worked out really well it's like has a bunch of wood ash in it but it's cone six which is like a medium temperature usually wood ash melts at a higher temperature mm -hmm. anyways without getting too into the weeds like the ash i think eats into the iron that's in there so it brightens <laughs> it a lot so it has like um it can brighten the work a bit but like still be this like really natural colorway are these sketched out beforehand? Are they derived from drawings or no? A little bit, but nothing like too tight. There's some, I, I don't know if it's like I'm just not good enough at drawing something that's going to be 3D or I'm not good enough at sculpting a drawing. Does that make sense? There's always like a bit of a play. Mm -hmm. But I definitely do draw a lot more now that I'm doing this kind of work and a different kind of drawing. Yeah, I was just curious, like, what the process was like and how open it might be. But it would make sense to me. These feel like they were drawn somehow to me, that they were derived from some two-dimensional aspect. I mean, a lot of them kind of are in yeah. some way. But then I, like, sometimes will try to get away from that because they get to maybe poppy in the way that, or like symbolic, I guess, in the way that they are made. Hmm. Yeah, like, you're trying to avoid that? Not in like, I enjoy the symbolic aspect, but I mean as like, you know, when some people, they draw like a building and it's like, it's basically you're drawing a symbol of a building. You're not drawing an actual building. Totally, like a clip art of a building. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, like, I think a lot of that can translate it from copying too directly because yeah. I think that's the way that I draw. Um, but then doing it, looking at a bunch of drawings, having the idea, and then just focusing on the clay kind of lets it be more clay-like, like, lets the material do more, you know. Of that talking. Yeah. So I find that, I don't know. It, yeah, it goes back and forth. But there's definitely, like, things of be like trying to figure it out in a drawing or at least being like here's an idea here's like an image i've been thinking about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you said you figured out the vases like in school right yeah yeah so was, before before that were you uh before you had figured that out were you trying to what were you trying to do with in your life school? or in yeah, my just life? Like, yeah like when you were a little kid were you drawing in school were you drawing yeah. I'm trying, yeah, it definitely was. I think it was, you know how I was saying there's like some stuff that people do and it just clicks and like makes sense and you can think yeah, yeah. through it and whatever. I think I forced myself to draw a lot when I was a kid. And it was a lot well, of like... You forced yourself? Yeah, like I was like, this is cool. I like looking at the drawings that other people make. Like I want to do that. Hmm. But I never really got to a point where it wasn't just like kind of copying something i don't know it wasn't it wasn't like a true expression of something mm -hmm. it was always like i am drawing like i am trying to draw this i don't know how to exactly explain it but i could i, like, I, I uh, get you yeah yeah it was always kind of like a chore but i always wanted to like yeah do drawing or like painting or something like that but i also didn't have like a space that i could really do it growing up um, but my grandma used to do like pottery I'd screw around a bit with her oh really yeah and I feel like okay. that kind of made more sense to me or something I don't know yeah so it didn't just come out of left field the uh, ceramic aspect no I feel like yeah I always enjoyed it I always enjoyed looking at it and stuff too word yeah. so what are you trying to do uh, like what do you imagine where you imagine taking it how big are these these newer works? They're pretty small for now. I've been doing a lot of wood firing, and it's with um, this woman that lives in Montreal. 
but uh, has like a cabin maybe an hour and a half outside of here. And it's not a huge kiln and you have to share it. So like I can't really go overboard. Like we've only done like two or three. So like or I can't j- make just, some... Just like I'm going to... I probably don't know exactly what it is, but wood firing. Like I think I've seen people do... What the fuck's it called? Raku? Raku. Yeah, Raku. And that's like literally a... Like a like an almost like a bonfire, right? Like they make a fire. Is there a kiln involved in that process? Um, Raku Raku usually has a kiln. Yeah. In like American Raku. Okay. But then I think pit firing is what you're thinking of. Okay. Pit so firing good. is where you just kind of bury shit and like light a fire and throw like usually like some corrugated tin over it or something. That's wild. But it doesn't so, reach a very high temperature. Hmm. Um, and so, like, when you're talking about wood firing, explain that to me. Wood firing is, like, you build a kiln, but it's basically just a bunch of high-temperature bricks. With The one that we use is, like, it has a big chimney. It has a chamber, which you put the work in. And then below the chamber is just uh, two fireboxes that you just put wood into for like 12 straight hours. So then all the ashes and smoke and temperature go from Hmm. the fire into the chamber of the chimney. But you can get that up to like, I think we go to cone 10 or something, which is like 1300 degrees Celsius. And so would the prior vases have been fired in a norm, what I know to be a normal kiln, which is just like an electric kiln? Yeah. Yeah, you'd biscuit and then glaze it. The old biscuit. Yeah, bis- bisking stuff is like when you do the initial firing. So yeah, it's yeah, still yeah. porous. But like if you put water on it, like it's not going to melt. Because clay, if, if it's not fired, you can just put it in water and it'll turn back into clay. Like it's yeah, like forever, yeah, yeah. forever recyclable or whatever. That's interesting to consider when looking at these pieces. They, they, um, the newer The newer work possesses a kind of dark primeval energy in which that process makes sense to me Mm -hmm. i mean i feel like i honestly i'm like trying to get in touch with something that's like much more natural with something yeah i don't know exactly what it is but like just being more natural like having an output that like is a little bit removed from like city and culture and whatever like yeah yeah no, it's just interesting, you know, all the different people I talk to on this podcast are all at different stages in their career. Yeah. And so it, it's interesting to talk to you where, like, you've executed, and I would say successfully, a certain arc, and now mm-hmm. you're exploring that next state. And it's not being explored from, like, a careerist orientation, I don't think. I'm not saying that in a good or bad way. Yeah. Um, but you're not deliberately, like doubling down on the the fact that you're represented and you want to make sellable work it sounds like you're going in a maybe the opposite direction just trying to explore things more organically yeah and maybe they will they maybe by virtue of that natural expression they will sell more mm. i'm more cyn- i'm more cynical about things like that i don't i think to succeed in the marketplace you typically have to be very conscious of the market and try to succeed you know like you yeah you look I mean, at I'm what works. equally as cynical. <laughs> <laughs> I've just like chosen to ignore that. I don't think it's you know what it's hope I, for I, the best. I, I don't think it's cynicism. It's just like pretty obvious, right? Like if your focus yeah. is to make money, you should look at markets and co- like hang out with collectors and make that money, and that's going to happen for you because that's what you're trying to do, and that's what you're doing. But like if you're yeah. if it's not that, you know. It's pretty awesome if it does happen serendipitously, but usually you're going to get what you focus on. So the work might be more in line with your soul or something. And maybe you enter, maybe there's less interest for that period of work. But mm-hmm. I think over the span of a lifetime, it's pretty fucking weird to be like relevant as an artist for 50 years in terms of the market. That seems very odd to me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going for you know the I mean? long con. Exactly. <laughs> I'm playing the long game. 
No, but I, and it's true. I think also there are people that like find a, a a mode of working where they're like, oh, this makes sense. I love doing this. It's interesting to me, and I like find new aspects of it every day and whatever. But if they start selling and they have a certain gallery that's like, no, this sells. Like, I don't think you actually really are allowed to change it. Like, I know a yeah, lot of people right. that have a career and are like, oh, you're so lucky that you're still allowed to try something new. I'm like, that's nice. But uh, I'm also kind of fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, yeah. I mean, like, you know, I think you should be proud of your work. You look at, it, you know, you look at it. It's cool. It's good work. Yeah. I mean, I and like making you, it. And I also. Yeah. You got a good job. Yeah, good right? enough, like, I guess. Like, compared to most uh, jobs. I mean, I guess that's true. Work's looking good. It's pretty in line with what you're trying yeah. to do. Yeah, makes sense. You're in a beautiful city. Yeah, true that. Too expensive. <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be like, I kind of just want to start making, like, functional, like, pot. I'm going to be, like, a studio potter. Dude, I think that's, a, I think half of you should be that. That'd be fascinating. I know, that would be sick. I would I find, love if that I, was my job part. Yeah, I mean, maybe you need a more um, normal job. I find great solace in providing a very simple service to people sometimes. It's kind what of a, you, what a, what a what relief. I think that, like, you spend so much time... Uh, exploring yourself and expressing yourself that yeah. obviously it becomes isolating yeah. unless unless you're doing it in a more humane mode where like oh you know people get it and it's like not obscure right then i find like just doing like you're saying like making a chair or a stool i pretend, i like making stools right and i mean they're not that <laughs> they they themselves could be a little more sturdy i think but um <laughs> It's just cool. Like, there's something really magical about objects that serve a function and can enter into a child's life or a family member's life. Yeah. Um, I think what you're getting at is like the middle ground can be kind of frustrating sometimes. Yeah. Um, but it can also be where the magic happens. So it's it's because there's like a dissonance about one's expectations. Right. Um, but there is something really beautiful to me about the extremes, like making something really simple in the daytime for money and like people you love, especially if you're like a suburban boy like me, it's like, you know, it, it's cool when my family gets it and they can sit on it or they can appreciate the beauty of a wooden object. Right. Um, I know my comics are never going to do that straight yeah. up. Right. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, nor, nor would I want it maybe to do yeah. that. But, yeah, um, yeah. It's almost like we're asking for too much sometimes when uh, when seeking to combine both of those things. It's really difficult. I mean, there's almost always a trade-off. And uh, I think for me, I, I realized that maybe like five years ago, just like, oh, yeah, everyone has their cross to bear. You know, like the fine artist making paintings isn't just like explosively expressing themselves for 50 years and the museum loves it. There's a give and take and there's a restriction necessary right to that yeah. process you know yeah that's so true. anyway i mean well, i did uh like yeah um, go go it was like a friend of a friend they hit me up and they're like oh i have this friend that's coming from japan he does ceramics like he'd love to use your studio for a bit just like hang out and meet you and i was like yeah, yeah. for sure he came in and he's like, oh, I have all these pieces. Like you can just have one or two. And I feel like just having that cup in my house and like using it every day means like so much more to me than like any artwork I've seen recently. Yeah. And there's maybe exactly. it's like there's like a possession thing. It was like yeah. as an object thing, which I don't really want to like subscribe to. But there is something in it that's like. You mean like know, property? So like it's like a property thing like you yeah like, like you being like it? this is mine like i try to be like that i don't think that's actually why i like it i don't like, think so i think it's like it's 
incorporated into a sensorial experience that is essential, like drinking, whereas viewing an object is not really a very complicated process. But, you know, drinking yeah. a liquid and lifting the cup and, like, the way it interacts with that in your hand is, like, actually much more complicated. And this is where I think architecture is probably the most, the highest art because you live in the damn thing. And right. its structure completely alters the way you experience your entire life, basically. Right. You know, like yeah. your, your home or something. Yeah. So uh, in some ways, there's like the humility of what an object can do, which is not much. <laughs> or like the humili humility of like what a comic can do in the year 2023. It's like, well, let's be real. <laughs> you know? <laughs> there's, yeah. like, there's film. Then film's like already eclipsed by v basically video games. And then you're going to have like fucking virtual experiences and I think there's like an honesty about although you might you or I might be attracted to a medium mm -hmm. it doesn't mean shit for its relevance you know like yeah sure uh, and and like some people just hit it all in the right way I think some people are into the thing that's happens to be in the right moment um at the right time or they're just mature and they're like, I'm willing to take sacrifices and make it less about my own enjoyment. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, you know what I'm saying. You think that think sacrifice it, is more mature? Do I think sac I think sacrifice is essentially a marker of maturity? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, when I think because like I think about a child, right? Like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In that sense. Sure. Like, like the last thing a child does is sacrifice anything, or mm -hmm. or think of others. Uh, you know, but I was raised Roman Catholic. Like the whole religion is predicated on sacrifice. So, um, yeah. I, but I do think that. Like, I think uh, there's a lot of beauty in that. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, I just think like there is a kind. Of, I always say on this podcast, like I used to think I was a bottomless well in terms of like ideas and creativity, and I basically am, but I'm not in the sense of like self-expression. Like I got pretty bored with what am I going to express, if that makes sense. Like right, like if you're just given like a pen and paper, you yeah. just feel like this is so fucking boring now. No, no, like I, I love that process, but I mean like in terms of making books, like I felt like I got to a point in my late twenties where I was like, I'm pretty good on this whole. Like, the well is dry. I need to go live right. life, in a sense. And, um... Oh, I, I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, like, just like... Like, uh, you'd, you'd lived that and were satisfied by it. Yeah, and then, like, I wanted to... I always say, like, it's... it's I think it's important to have different problems in each decade of your life. Like, it, it's weird right. to be 45 and talking to someone like you're worried about your Tinder date and you're fucking 23 years old. Like, that's... To me, is like unex pretty much unacceptable. I want to hear about like how you are disappointed with your child, or you know your job sucks. Like I want to hear narrative shifts in actual life, and I think um, basically by sitting in a room and making narratives, I kind of stunted that own narrative shift in my actual yeah. life. If that makes sense. I mean, I I agree with you in, in a way of like changing of decades and being like. I like going to openings now and then I can talk to these artists who I don't get to see that much because they have kids. We don't really talk about art or anything. And yeah. then other times I'll go to one where it's like more young people and they're just like, fuck, man, I'm going to have like a show here and like I get to do this. And I'm like, dude, I could not fucking care less. Really. <laughs> like, it's really yeah, not yeah. that interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I think art was like my world and then the world itself. Um, yeah, it's all, I, I say it for the better, you know, like. Um, yeah, life just became more interesting because I let it become more interesting, I think. Right. If yeah. that makes sense. And then I honestly, I just stepped back and I said, look, this is like, again, like you're used to looking at books of people's lives. And if you really look at the back of it, usually like they go to war, they have tuberculosis, uh, like they just like wipe out like 15 years of their life, yeah. if not more. And then they make paintings and they die. And yeah. I think that's a that for me that's a relief. Like, oh, you don't have to like. It's not a job per se, and although I respect people like Miyazaki who just are, are it all the time, I think it's incredible. Um, I just know for me that that's not 
I apparently don't have the type of muscles to do that long distance run, if that makes sense. I mean, it is so fucking hard. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess I've been thinking about that, too. I've, like, really been, like, fuck, I did this so backwards. Backwards? Yeah, like, being, like, I should have done this just, like, in old, older age or something. <laughs> Like when I have yeah, the money yeah. and whatever, but I also think it's it's a bit scary because I like especially everyone in my family, they're all very um, like they're all just like tradespeople and shit like that, and hmm. creativity like isn't really a part of their life that much. Like maybe in a little bit, like my mom really likes cooking, but like. What do you mean by trades? Like like electrician, plumber, that kind of thing? Yeah, like my mom was a welder. My dad's like a heavy equipment operator and shit nice. like that. So I'm just kind of like, I do see in some ways like the negative effect of like not having kind of things to express yourself can be. Or it's sure. like it's a little bit depressing on the outside. Like if all you have at the end of the day is just like TV. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. You're burnt out and you watch TV. <laughs> yeah, like so many of my dad's friends are just like, fuck, retirement's so boring. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, that kind of stuff is depressing to me and like a bit scary if I didn't pursue something like this and like learn about it and spend time doing it and whatever and feel comfortable with it. Um, I think it's about yeah. the, the balance of the, you know, hopefully we we live a normal life expectancy, but... Yeah, the balance and variety of of just a, a normal life. Like shit changes, and yeah, these phases are completely acceptable and normal. Mm -hmm. So, all that to say, if you were to make a cup that actually functioned, I'd be very interested. Oh, I made tons in that. <laughs> Where are they? I was sitting on a shelf in front of me. Really? Yeah. Are they just shaped like a cup? Uh, no, there's a bunch of different ones. It's pretty, it's fun. It's like equally as expressive. I think maybe not a... Uh, are they beautiful? I think some of them. I think some of the wood-fired ones are really good. Can I buy one? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, I'll buy one. I could probably just send you one, too. Well, they price like... <laughs> I think ceramics is super funny to me because like a ceramic cup at like a fair or something is like ridiculously underpriced in my opinion. It's so and, that aspect of ceramics is so fucking frustrating. <laughs> well, yeah, because it, it causes a ripple effect of everyone having to co uh, price the shit super low. Yeah, there's yeah. It's, and then even the, the fine art, of, the cost of clay is crazy. It's like a dollar a pound now too. So, like, Dollar just pound. even for material, like, without any of the, uh, the, like, firing and whatever bullshit, it's so expensive. Um, anyway, sorry. But, yeah, the pricing of it's gnarly. Because, one, they're, like, if it's semi-functional, they'd be, like, this should be, you know, mass production price. Yeah. But then there's also stuff where people do mass produce it, basically. And they're, like, no, it's handmade. And then try sell it for like more than it should be for like some functional stuff but then i don't know i'm not that really the arbiter of how fucking expensive stuff should be but um the no but I, I is really yeah, annoying i do feel that they're just cheap but yeah send me a pic i want to i'm curious yeah for sure i feel like well i know you've been together. working all day but uh you know what no i got nothing else you got anything are we going to start the podcast soon or what? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good joke. Yeah, that was good, eh? Yeah, it was I mean, really it has good, been man. nice. It just kind of felt like a phone call. That's what they are, man. They're just yeah. calls. We're just talking. This is in it, too. Are you gonna, where are you going to move? How long is this? 75 minutes right now. Where are you going to move, though? You said B uh, Vancouver? BC. Yeah. I have a lot of friends that live on Vancouver Island. Uh, that's a, that's an island. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a big island. It's like huge. huge island. Yeah. Um, and there's like a film industry and stuff like that. So I'll probably do work for that. I got to stop work. telling everyone all my plans because I feel like they won't happen if I do it too much. Uh, really? I thought, I thought the opposite happened when you told people plans that, that you do it because they all know you're going to 
Really? Yeah, like you I feel was... shame if you don't do it, right? Yeah, I guess that's true. But I don't. You that's know. a good plan, though. Um, that's, look, it looks beautiful. I'm yeah, it's also like, I mean, it's very expensive and all this shit and whatever. But it's a little bit more rural or, or like at least you can get to rural spaces like quite a bit easier. And in yeah, the yeah. 70s and 80s and shit, there was a lot of hippies there like doing ceramics. So there are a lot of those kilns that are like kind of harder to harder to find in a in a major city like a wood That's kiln cool. or something that demands a bit of space and like whatever. Nice. Well, what do you got coming up? You got anything coming up? The people of uh, I have a show at Pangee on the in January. Nice. That's solo. Uh, yeah. Nice. I mean, it's they have two and a half galleries there. Like show two spaces and, or whatever. Is it the yeah, same they have spot? like. I don't think so. Where did you go? The Belgo building when it was in that like. There was just like tremendous construction. I remember on the street, and it was. Just and it like was a, like downtown, right? Yeah. And it was just basically like a narrow, long. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's in a different place. They moved nice. into like an old Czech. Uh, what is it? Um, Czech cashing. No, like. Czech, like the Czech Republic, like oh. uh, what's it called? Like not an ambassador building or like the amb- yeah, I think it was the embassy Damn. or something. But it's That's this cool. really like beautiful old building. So they have a floor of that, maybe more now. But uh, it's like kind of just looks like a really nice house. But then they have a project space upstairs as well. Nice. Yeah. So I have a show All right, there. so you got that. That's kind of it. I'm just working towards that, like, very slowly. Nice. But it's been nice. I get to, I feel like, yeah. Well, if you're ever in New York, hit me up. I really should go before I move. I feel like yeah, I probably yeah, won't. Yeah, because you'll, you'll never come back. Probably. I also, be. like, haven't been to New York in five years. Well, that's understandable. Yeah. That's not really the move my the direction of my life is taking. No, I'm not, no, you're going, I'm not you're more going, eager yeah. to see like more city, you know? Yeah. There's this kind of thing where you go, these are all kind of the same, aren't they? Yeah. When you get to that, that stage. Yeah. I mean, it's also nice. Like I would go and visit my brother and my dad and they live on a farm. It's not like a really crazy, like bucolic or anything, but it's nice to like be able to leave the house and not feel obligated to go anywhere. Like yeah. you can just be outside. And just like have coffee, walk around, whatever, and not be like. Were, were yeah, you raised? Together. Were you raised a rural boy? Kind of, yeah. Oh, like I grew up on a farm with my oh, cousins word. and stuff, but like close enough to a town. Basically, like the town has transformed into like a distant suburb of Vancouver. Yeah, but like I grew up yeah. on the outskirts of that. Okay, so you're yeah. returning to whence you came. Kind of, yeah. I've I've got the I've heard the call. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see yeah. see how that goes. You gotta heat it. But all right, I gotta go. Good talking to you. Yeah, it was nice to talk to you. And uh no, I'm serious. Send me a picture of these cups. I'm curious. Oh yeah, I'll I think I have a bunch of that I took the other day and I'll I'll like text them to you or something. All right. Okay, peace. I'll have talk to you night. later. Bye. Music by Dory Bavarsky and Ming-Yu Chen. Next up, we have Sam Keen. Enjoy your week.